Hi, Russ of Aquarimax here, and today I'm going to be doing part three of my isopod macro lens tour. If you haven't seen the armadillidium or the porcelio part of the tour, I'll put a link in the description, and at the end of the video I'll put an in screen so you can check out and enjoy the rest of the tour. And now, without further ado, on to part three. Now, even though I've already done porcelio, in the first installment of the tour, I wanted to put these Porcelio Levis milk back in this tour because they didn't make it into uh, phase one of the tour because they're relatively recent acquisitions. And I really like these so far. Porcelio Levis dairy cow is one of my favorite isopods ever, and these appear to be similar to them. As you can see, their pattern looks somewhat similar, but Many of the specimens have uh, kind of a light patch on the interior part of the carapace and then the outer parts are darker. Hence the name Milkback, as if a drop of milk had been spilled on their backs. I'm interested to see how these compare in terms of their uh, reproductive rate, and in terms of their maximum adult size, and so on, with Porcelio Levis dairy cow. But so far they do seem to be doing really well. They just there aren't any that have bred yet, but I haven't had them for very long, so I expect it'll be soon. This species is Oniscus ocellus. Interestingly enough, its name means donkey donkey. One is Latin, one is Greek. It's kind of fun. They have some really interesting patterns. They have these scalloped skirts. They like cool temperatures and fairly high humidity. The species also gets fairly large among isopods that can be found living in a wild situation in the United States. It can approach one inch, although I don't know that I've ever seen one get quite that big. I love the gold to white flecking that they get on their backs. Really beautiful pattern. And they are one of the isopods that will stay still a little better than some of the others, so we can get a better look at this one, I feel like, than we can with certain other very active isopods. This species is Silisticus convexus, also known as the curly isopod or sometimes the teardrop isopod. When they roll up, they don't roll up into a perfect sphere like some of the armadillidium species, but rather into kind of a teardrop shape, which is pretty interesting and unique. I collected the original specimens in my backyard a few years ago, and they have done very well. These are a pretty robust isopod. They don't get really big, but they breed quickly. They are tolerant of a wide variety of conditions. As far as any pill bug, I think in terms of isopods that roll up, these are quite uh, interesting that way, in that they don't need as much ventilation as most armadillidium species. They'll do quite well with uh, lower ventilation, and I think the coloration on their uropods here is kind of right near their uropods. It's kind of interesting. Reminds me a little bit of the uh, Cubaris uh, Murina. It has the little markings there, but you don't really notice unless you see them up close. And I don't think all of them have it either. This is a species that lives up to its name. This is Atlantosa floridana, the Florida fast isopod. They really move when they want to move. It can be hard to uh, pin them down. Very quick movers, very small isopods. They do well in moist habitats, so they're a great bioactive option for an enclosure with a lot of humidity. And they're fast enough and small enough, they're probably going to evade being eaten entirely as a population by whatever macro funnel you're keeping in your vivarium. These isopods are usually so fast in these, this small deli cap, we can get a little better look at them. They do have some pretty interesting patterns on them, which you don't really see most of the time because they're either moving too fast or they're just too small. But Again, a great isopod for moist habitats and good candidate for not getting eaten in a humid habitat, at least not finished off. 
this because some of them are bound to escape with their speed. This species here is a pretty small species. I would say it's a dwarf. It's not quite as small as, say, dwarf whites or dwarf purples, maybe about twice the size or three times the size of a dwarf white. And it is known simply as Isopoda species tarragona from the locality in Spain where it was originally collected. It is not really a hobby isopod, but more of a cleanup crew isopod. So as you can see, some of the individuals are fairly orange. There are also more gray individuals. And this species is a pretty good candidate for fairly humid vivariums. I use it with my dart frogs. They're fairly secretive. They're a good size. Dart frogs will eat some of them, but they won't eat all of them. And they're very tolerant of the low ventilation and high humidity in such an enclosure. So I find these to be a pretty useful species. Probably not as commonly used as a cleanup crew as it should be. Here is another dwarf species. This one, again, not as small as a dwarf white, two or three, two or three times the size of a dwarf white, known as the uh, dwarf stri striped isopod. Uh, Nagurus cristatus is the scientific name. And this species is one that showed up originally in my vivariums uh, without me ever having purchased it. And it is a pretty good species for vivariums because it is fairly secretive and seems to reproduce by parthenogenesis. So it can rebound even from a small population. And it seems to do better though with some ventilation. If you keep it without any, it doesn't seem to do as well. And when I increased the ventilation of this species, they started to do better for me. I think that was a tip from Forest Oasis who gave me that if, I, if I'm not wrong. Let's take a look at some of them under the macro lens. This is another species with fairly interesting color and pattern that you just don't really see unless you get an up close look. They have that uh, contrast in the Europods and then even the markings along the back are kind of fun. But they just don't get a lot of attention because they're small. Now this species is easily one of my all-around favorites to recommend as a cleanup crew in most situations. The only time I won't recommend these as a cleanup crew is basically when the vivarium is going to be too high in humidity or too low in ventilation. Otherwise, these work really well. I use this species in with my leopard gecko, but it can do well in uh, enclosures with higher humidity and than a leopard gecko, but still you wouldn't want to keep these with dart frogs, at least in my experience. They don't work as well with dart frogs, but uh, generally all around good cleanup crew species because they're very prolific, they have good appetites, and they don't tend to attack other species as readily as some of the larger Procellio might. They also come in quite a few different color varieties. I love the, the richness of the color on these as well as their activity. They're always moving and they reproduce extremely quickly. They're just all around great isopod to have on hand. And they're pretty day active too. So as far as pet potential goes, because they are so active and visible and prolific, they make a pretty good choice too. Not the biggest of isopods, but definitely one of the more visible, if you want one to keep as a display animal. Here is the wild type, Porcellione dice prunosis powder blue. And I guess in this particular light, I can almost see where they get their name. And here's a close up on some of the wild types. They're of course just as active as any other cultivar. And well, I think the term powder blue is a little bit imaginative. In certain lights and situations, they do have kind of a velvety, slate bluey gray kind of look to them if you, you know, have a little bit of imagination. And at any rate, they're a pretty cool isopod. Definitely worth keeping around. Now here is a strain of Porcellionidos prunosis that's a little less common in the hobby than some of the others. 
You won't see it as often as the powder blue or the powder orange at least. But they breed just as quickly. It is the whiteout. And as far as I'm aware, they don't have any uh, dark pigment in their body at all. They just white, their eyes are white. The only reason you see dark uh, coloration there in their bodies is because of the food they're eating that's in their digestive tract. And so you see something there. But other than that, they just have this pure white color like this individual here. Kind of gives you the uh, impression of what the, the species is named for. Close up you can really see that digestive tract full of dark food matter. This one, some of them don't have a lot of material in their gut and so it's a lot easier to just see the, the white coloration. They do have some of that glossiness that this species is known for, of course. It gives them the powder in their name. Looks like these two are relatively sedentary for the moment. Makes it a little easier to get a good look at them. Now I do have a normal individual you can see on the leaf, but you can also see an individual with some white pigmentation on it as well, as well as a manka. And this is what may or may not be the Oreo crumble mutation. Oh, lost that one. They're pretty fast. And here's an individual with some of that unusual pigmentation, so let's take a look at it under the macro lens. All right, here's one of them. Just a few random patches of white pigment on its body, or lack of dark pigment on its body, I should say. And it seems to be breeding true, but I've got enough individuals in there that were the wild type coloration, and this is probably a recessive trait. It's going to be a while before I'm able to have a completely true breeding group of them. I'm really enjoying working with them, especially since these just spontaneously showed up in my wild type cultures. Um, and so we'll see what I can do with them. It might be a few more months before I get them true breeding, but it's just part of the fun. I hope you're enjoying the isopod macro lens tour so far. We have a couple more species to see, but before we do that, I want to take a moment to thank our patrons at Patreon. A lot of what we do on this channel is made possible directly by your support, and so I really wanted to express my gratitude for that, as well as for everything that all of you do to support the channel, because even watching the channel makes a difference. Now, Back to the isopod tour. And I know some of you have just been saying, where are the duckies? Bring on the rubber duckies. Well, here are some rubber duckies for you. This is Cubaris species rubber ducky. It's not really scientifically described yet, so that's just the term that's been used for it. And they are pretty undeniably cute. Their faces do indeed resemble the rubber duckies for which they're named. And they seem to be wildly popular right now. Um, I am having difficulties getting mine to breed, but uh, hopefully in the future I will um, have some success with that. But I do have a small colony of them, and we'll just kind of see how that goes. Wish me some luck with getting them to breed. I am providing limestone for them. You can see here this is a very small individual sitting on one of the limestone rocks I have in their enclosure. And I have heard that keeping them a little on the warmer side will help encourage them to breed. So we'll see how it goes. The only other Cubara species I keep is red tiger. I recently got a couple of these, a few of these locally from Damien at Nocturnal Exotics. And they're pretty fantastically colored. Right now mine are all pretty small, but they're supposed to breed pretty well. They seem to move faster than the rubber duckies. And uh, the pattern on them is really quite cool. I can see why they, they named them Red Tigers. Some of the Cubaras with the names are like, where do you get that name? But yeah, you can, you can see it. Pretty cool isopod. And hopefully a little easier to breed than the uh, rubber duckies have been 
for me. I know some people get the rubber duckies to breed pretty easily, but for whatever reason I haven't had a lot of success with that yet. But maybe these guys will be a little bit easier. I hope you enjoyed this portion of the isopod tour. If you haven't seen the other parts of the tour with the armadillidium and most of the Parcellio species that I have, then you can check those out here. And if you'd like to check out my Patreon page, you can go here and check that out as well. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday all on aquarium and vivarium pets, so please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.